This video is going to go over the coupling options that are found inside of the multi-section solid and multi-section surfacing commands of CATIA version 5. To show you the four different options, I'm going to create a simple scenario to describe the differences between the four. In this scenario, I have two datum planes that are offset from each other and this one's actually slightly tilted as well so these aren't quite perfectly parallel. I'm going to draw a shape on each one of these planes and the shape is going to be very similar but not exact copies. So let's begin by creating a sketch on my YZ datum plane. I'm going to keep this sketch fairly simple. I'm going to start off with a vertical line, a horizontal line, I'm going to draw a tangent arc here and then just simply close off the shape. Now I am doing this sketch with a purpose. I want to have two sharp points or two sharp connections on the right hand side and I want to have two tangency connections on the left hand side. So it did not automatically drop in that tangency on the top so I'm going to manually add that tangency constraint. So in total we have a nice close shape with four discernible vertices, two of them being tangent and then two of them being sharp. Now in the back plane I'm going to create something that's very similar but I'm not going to keep the sizes the same. I'm going to vary my uh, lines so that way they're not perfectly horizontal and vertical. So using the same method I'm going to sketch on that angled plane. Let's start off by drawing an angled line not perfectly vertical, another line not perfectly horizontal. I'm also making this shape much bigger. All right, then we'll make a tangent arc here to the top and then close off that shape. Once again, I need to add a tangency manually on this top. So in the end, again, it's a very similar shape. We have four segments, three of them being linear lines, one being an arc. We have four vertices, two tangencies uh, on the left and two sharp points on the right. So now that we've made our sketches, let's see how to convert these two different sketches into a solid that blends between these two shapes. In CATIA version 5, we call that a multi-section solid. So to make that multi-section solid, the first thing I'm going to do is switch to my part design workbench, and the button is here in the sketch-based features toolbar. I'm going to click on that button, and I'll have it to start off with the smaller shape and end with the bigger shape. Now, if I simply come over and hit preview, you can see that it does create the transitional shape pretty much the way that I wanted it. You know, I, I wanted a nice logical connection where... You know, the, the linear line on the right would kind of blend together, the top lines would blend together, the arcs would blend together. Now, let's see the different options that it could potentially choose in the coupling tab. There's four different options. The first one that we have is the ratio type. If we click on the ratio type and hit preview, you can see that it did slightly alter the shape that we have and it altered it in a way that uh, it's not connecting the way that I want. In the top right hand corner the closing points are automatically defined as a coupling curve so those coupling curves are going to stick together so the top right vertex points do blend. But if I take a look closer at the bottom right points, specifically if I take this point and kind of trace it down to the back profile I see that it actually didn't you know blend into that vertex point so we actually have a slight twist that's occurring in the bottom the bottom right hand side if I take a look at the vertex point where it transitions between the linear line segment and the arc again if I kind of trace that down it's not connecting that with that same equivalent point on the back profile so all the way around the shape with the exception of where my closing points are I get this twist configuration again this is tied to the coupling type that we have in this case called ratio and the curves are coupled according to the ratio length along the actual shapes themselves so since these are not perfect size matches this is not going to you know create a nice fluid transition between them and I do get the twist now let's take a look at tangency 
The tangency option does do a little bit better, specifically here in the bottom right hand corner. If I zoom in once more, now you can see that it does actually tell the two bottom right sharp vertices to blend together, whereas before it wasn't. Uh, but if we take a look at the tangency locations, we still have that same problem where they're not matching up. So why did the tangency method fix my bottom right sharp point connection? Well, that's because the tangency method is meant to be coupled according to their tangent discontinuities. And a tangent discontinuity is just a really fancy way of saying a sharp point. So it will say... If you have sharp points, I will try to match them up. Now there is a caveat here, and that caveat says in order for me to do this, I have to have the same number of sharp points on each profile. Now let's check out the third option, which is called tangency then curvature. If I hit preview on tangency then curvature, you can see that this is actually exactly the way that I wanted these two shapes to transition. So now I have the connections properly right combining together at that transition between the line segment and the arc for both top and bottom tangency then curvature is going to match up my tangent discontinuity so my sharp points but now it's actually going to match up my tangent locations as well so we've got nice connections all the way around so in this case tangency then curvature would be the one that i would want we also have one more option called vertices you're not going to notice a difference here between the two because vertices says i'll match up however many vertices that you have now the thing that you have to watch out for is that for ratio tangency tangency then curvature and vertices there's caveats with three of them. So the three uh, on the bottom, so tangency, tangency, then curvature, and vertices, they all have caveats that say in order for me to match these up, I have to have the same number of items. So for instance, vertices, if I were to try to use uh, the vertices coupling option with a transition between, let's say, a triangle and a circle, that's not going to work because they don't have the same number of vertices. So if you're wanting to do like a complicated scenario where you have, you know, different shapes with different number of sharp points and tangency points coming together, the only way that you're going to be able to accomplish that is with the ratio type. So I'm going to choose the tangency, then curvature, and then click OK. So let's try an example that is slightly more complicated. I want to transition a triangle into a rectangle into a circle. Clearly the problem that will arise here is that none of my shapes have the same number of vertices or sharp points or tangency points. So I do have a triangle with three vertices blending into a rectangle. What that will end up doing is it will have the the bottom vertices, uh, this are the bottom left and right points to blend into the bottom left and right points of the rectangle. But the top point of the triangle will actually split into two different directions. So that top point of the triangle will eventually kind of split and end up with both points on the top of the rectangle blending. And then the four points of my rectangle need to somehow transition into the circle. So there was a little bit of legwork that I've already done uh, if I double click to go into my circle sketch, that circle has some construction lines and those construction lines are controlled at 45 degrees, going through the center of the circle, and then finally where those construction lines intersected with the circle in the sketcher workbench, I placed this point. Uh, using the point by clicking icon at those different locations. So even though a circle does not have any discernible vertex points, what I did was I forced four points on the circle so that way I can later reference them when I'm creating these different coupling curves. So let's get started by clicking on our icon for our multi-section solid. I'm going to begin by clicking on the triangle the rectangle and our circle. You want to make sure that your closing points and arrow directions are matching in each shape. Uh, that is to prevent any type of twist configuration. So the closing point for my triangle is in the bottom left vertex point. The closing point for my rectangle is the top left. 
And then the closing point on the circle is just a randomly generated spot that Katia has selected. So none of these are matching up right now. To fix this, I'm going to make my closing points for the back two sketches abide by the closing point for the triangle, which is at the bottom left. You right click and hit replace and choose the new location. Right click and hit replace and choose the new location. Then quickly glancing at your arrows to make sure that they are pointing around the shape in the same direction. And don't think of those as pointing up, down, left, or right. Think of them as are they pointing kind of clockwise or counterclockwise. They're all currently matching up. So if I hit preview, the first thing that will happen is Katia generates a warning that says that the current coupling mode cannot be applied. And in order for it to be made, we have to switch to the coupling mode called ratio. So once again, knowing what we now know, you can see that it was defaulting to the tangency then curvature method, but tangency then curvature cannot be applied because we do not have the same number of sharp points and uh, tangent points throughout our different shapes. The only one that does not have any stipulation attached to it is the ratio type, but when I choose the ratio type, and if I come over here and just kind of rotate to show you, it did not actually create the shape the way that I wanted it to. So it did make a solid, but it just didn't transition the vertex points in a controlled fashion the way that I want to control it. Specifically, it did not know to take the top point of the triangle and split in two directions. To do this, we're going to add in what's called our coupling curves. You click here in the dialog box and hit add. And at this point, it is a little hard to see because it does turn the previously generated preview red and then the sketches are in orange. So it's a little hard to see an orange point on a red solid. Um, but you are clicking through the vertex points that you want Katia to connect together. So I will click on my bottom right points together. So I'm going to start off always with the triangle because it has to be in the original clicking order. So bottom right, bottom right, bottom right. You will highlight in this box again and hit add to add another one. Now we're going to start off with our triangle. So the top point of our triangle goes now over to the right. And then top right of the circle, highlight and hit add once more. Grab that top point of the triangle. And then now we're heading over to the left. So top left of the rectangle, top left of the circle. If I now come in here and hit preview, you can see how that shape has now updated. And we do not need to add a fourth coupling curve because the bottom left points are already coupled together because those are the closing points. So here is an example of how you can use those coupling options inside of your multi-section to help control the shape. And even if you are dealing with very complex situations, you can still use those coupling methods. We go over the multi-section solid in our Introduction to Modeling class, but we also go over the same concept in our Introduction to Surfacing and Advanced Surfacing class. If you have any questions about our classes, you can head to our website at rand3d.com. Go to the Training tab and we have an area for our course descriptions and current class schedules. And I do want to point out that we have live online classes so you can take any of our classes from the comfort of your own home. All you need is an internet connection.